Hello everybody, my name is Mike Guy, and welcome to my Exceptions video, Part 1, which is part of my series on Windows programming with C Sharp. Now so far we've written programs, and we've run these programs, and they've worked just fine, um, and we call those nominal or normal conditions. Uh, we are asked to type in a number, we type in a number, we hit OK. We're asked to type in a name, we type in a name and hit OK. And everything works great. All right, those are the normal operating conditions of our program. But sometimes we encounter something called an exception. An exception is when our program doesn't work exactly like we expected it to, or when the user doesn't do exactly what we wanted them to. All right, and they have caused an exception to the way our program runs. For instance, if I had a text field that I wanted the user to enter in a number, um, and then they didn't, they typed in some string or some symbol, I, and then I attempted to parse it, uh, my system might have an issue. Uh, if I didn't do the, the safe try parse, if I was simply doing a parse, uh, it could crash my program, uh, seeing how an exception occurred. All right, So non-normal operation conditions were found. Uh, furthermore, uh, if for some reason I ended up accidentally dividing by zero, again, we would see an exception. Okay, uh, You're not supposed to divide by zero. It's not something you want, uh, and so it's not a normal operating condition. Exceptions are, you know, ideally, uh, things, uh, situations in which our program won't run normally. Uh, but in programming, there are actual things. Exceptions are classes and objects which tell us what has gone wrong. Uh, so a term, or, or the way I might say it, is if something happens in my program, I might throw an exception. Or I might write code to safely catch an exception. Uh, to basically meaning that something has happened and I'm trying to handle it appropriately to prevent my system from crashing uncontrollably. All right, so we want to safely handle these exceptions to normal conditions uh, using our code. And that's what we're going to look at now. Uh, so now that we kind of understand a little bit about what exceptions are, let's take a look uh, at, at an actual exception, and then uh, hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create just a simple little program here, which is going to take two numbers and add them together. So I'm going to go to my toolbox here, uh, and I'm going to add a button and two text boxes. Just like that. All right. Uh, and... Yep. Uh, we'll change the wording on button to say calculate. There we go. All right. And uh, we're not really going to do a whole lot with this, but I'm going to calculate. And I am going to say, um, we'll say int result. And, uh, and actually, I want to do int num1 equals int 32.parse textbox one dot text and I want to do int num2 equals int 32 dot parse uh, oops textbox two dot text okay and the result is just going to equal num1 divided by num2 and then we'll do message box dot show result. Okay, fantastic. Uh, oops. Dot two string. Since result is an integer, we're going to say two string and turn it into a string. Okay, so real simple application here. And if I run it, we'll see I'll put in uh, 10 and 5. And we get, oops, okay, so this must be text box 1 and this must be text box 2. Let me fix that real quick. Unless I got them backwards, so we'll go 10 and 5, and we see 2. All right, fantastic. So our program works nominally under those conditions. All right, we did what we were supposed to do. But now let's pretend that we didn't do something, we, what we were supposed to do. I'm going to put an A instead of an integer. And I'm going to hit Calculate, and my program's going to crash. All right, and more specifically, we can see that we got an exception, and even the word exception is used. A format exception was unhandled. All right, input string was not in a correct format. Okay, what that means is that an exception occurred in our program, and we didn't do anything to handle it properly. 
as a result, our program stopped. It was like, hey, an exception happened. Nothing, nothing caught it. We don't know what to do. We're going to stop to prevent us from doing any more harm, corrupting data. Uh, in these little programs, that's not really a concern. But if you have to imagine in large scale uh, applications where there's a lot of data and in, in personal information and financial data, and you know, you don't want to accidentally destroy all that. So uh, programs will stop as opposed to just continuing on uh, in an environment where there's an exception. So no exception was caught here. Uh, and so the program just shut down. So let's go ahead and uh, stop that. Let's run it again. That was a format exception. Now let's try 10 and 0. And again, we have a divide by 0 exception. All right. We attempted to divide by 0. You can't do that. Uh, and so our program crashed. OK, so now we know how to crash our program. Let's look at how we can not crash our program. And we can use something called a try catch finally block. All right, try catch finally is what it's called. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep the code, but I'm gonna space it down here for a bit. Basically, there's three parts to this to this block, or or three blocks depending on how you want to look at it. The first is the try. It looks like this. Anything inside of that try block. All right will be handled more safely. All right, so we are going to attempt to do something. It is our try block, okay? So it's gonna say, hey, try to parse this. Try to divide this, all right? So a try block is where we put code that we want to attempt to handle safely. A try block always has a catch block, all right? Oops, let me get my spacing here, right? A try block always has a catch block. So what this means is, if we're trying something and an exception happens, the catch block catches that exception. All right. The catch block is responsible for, for catching any exceptions that pop up and handling them safely. The last part is the finally block. All right. Uh, we'll, we're not going to have the finally block yet. We're going to, I'll come back to that. I'll circle back around to the finally block. The finally block is optional, all right? Uh, but try and catch always go together. Okay. So what we can do is we can put any code uh, that, that, that can potentially crash inside our try catch block, all right? So what I'm going to do here is I am going to put this code inside my try catch, just like that. Uh, let me get rid of some of the spacing. Perfect. Um, also, while I'm at it, uh, the catch block needs to catch something specific. All right? We can't just leave it blank just like that. So we are going to catch exception as ex. All right? So we'll have this variable ex, uh, which will it says it's declared but never used. We'll, we'll, we'll use it here in a second. All right. So what we can see now is that any time an exception occurs in here, it will be caught here. All right, what we're going to do with that is we are going to say message box dot show ex dot two string. Oops, well, we might want to do ex dot message. Yep, that's what we want to do. Ex dot message. Okay, and that's going to tell us, hey, this is what happened in a more safe manner. Okay. So we'll use this as a sort of a, a, a building block to talk about more exception concepts. But let's test it out first. All right, so I'm going to run my program. And I'm going to try 10 divided by 2. Calculate just fine with 5. Now I'm going to try 10 divided by 0. And we're going to notice two distinct things. All right. The first is that I obviously got an error. Attempted to divide by 0. Which means this block down here ran. This catch block ran and output this error message. All right. So that's one thing we noticed. And I lied. There's actually three things we're going to notice. The second thing I noticed is my program didn't crash. All right. I safely handled that exception. I caught it, and so my program didn't have to crash. I'm still in my program. Everything is fine. The third thing I notice is that this message box never happened. The one where it outputs the result of the division. And let's talk about why. 
whenever an exception is thrown, and in this instance, an exception was thrown on this line when we, no, no, I'm sorry, this line when we attempted to divide, the second, the, the exact second, or millisecond, or moment, an exception is thrown, all right, this try block exits. So anything that comes after the exception will not run. All right, because the idea is, why would you run potentially faulty code? All right, we had an error. Let's get out of here before we cause any more trouble. So this line won't run. This is called code interruption. All right, this line won't run. And instead, we jump immediately to the catch block. The catch block kept, catches the exception, all right, and then outputs it. And then we exit the function. If I had code down here, here, watch, I'll show you. Message box dot show after the catch block. Let's run this. Now first off, if I say 10 divided by 2, I see my result and I see after the catch block. If you do 10 divided by G, I have the input string is not in the correct format and after the catch block. Alright, so we jump out of the try block into the catch block. Once the catch block is done, then our code resumes with anything that happens to be after it. We don't go back to the try, we don't exit the function altogether, we just leave the catch block and, and handle whatever's next. All right? Okay. Now I talked originally about the finally block. Now the finally block will run all the time, no matter what. All right? Now the finally block is important um, in instances where you're handling things like dynamic memory, uh, database or flat file connections, all right, where we just want to kind of clean up what's going on, all right. So the finally block will run uh, whether or not an exception happened. Now you might wonder, think to yourself, well, why not just put that code down after the catch block, all right? And you can, but sometimes there's an exception so extreme that you have no, no choice but to, to exit out of this function and that code won't run, all right? The finally block always runs, okay? It, it runs whether or not, it runs if there was an exception and it runs if there wasn't an exception and it runs if you're attempting to exit the block. The finally block is the place that you wanna put uh, your, your cleanup code to make sure your connections are closed, dynamic, dynamically allocated memory was deallocated, um, just to keep things clean. We don't use the finally block in this class all that much. Uh, probably not at all. Uh, we don't do a whole lot of dynamic allocations and stuff like that. Maybe when we get to databasing and stuff, but not not really a whole lot. So the finally block is not one we have to have, but we'll see it run. I'll hit play here, and I'll just, I'll generate an error. Input string was not correct form inside the finally block, and I'll run it correctly. I get a number and inside the finally block. All right, so the finally block always runs there. There's one more concept I want to talk about with the try catch block. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of finally here because we don't need it. And that's the issue of scope. All right. So for instance, let's say whether this was successful or not, I still want to have this message box. I always want to have this message box. So I'm going to put it after the catch block. All right. The problem, as you can see, there's a red line there. We'll talk about that problem. The problem is that result is declared inside my try block. So when this bracket is hit, result is cleaned up by garbage collection. Result does not exist in this scope. So you have to be real careful when you declare variables inside of a try block, all right? As with any blo block of code, if statements, loops, or whatever, they don't exist when you leave those blocks, all right? So if I really wanted to do this, I don't know about if write's the correct term, uh, more robust maybe. I could do int num1 and actually num2 result like that and then just remove the declaration just like that and now we're fine. And now we still have an issue. You'll notice even though these are now declared inside the larger scope, result is still showing the red line in saying use of unassigned local variable result. The reason that's a problem is because result has no value up here. And where result gets a value right here may never run. All right, what if this first line crashes the program? 
or throws an exception, won't crash the program because we're catching. Result will never get a value, and this will cause an exception. So the, the, the compiler is saying, hey, by the way, uh, this may not always work. You gotta be real careful here. Uh, and it's, it's not allowing us to set it up in this fashion. So you gotta be, you know, you, you sort of have to dance around a little bit when it comes to uh, working with values inside try catch blocks. If I wanted to make this work, I would probably have to do something along the lines of uh, saying int result equals zero, like this. And now result has a value no matter what. All right, and so this is this will allow it. All right, uh, you can see the red line has gone away. It says, oh, okay, this will have a value no matter what that value might happen to be. And I'll run it, and I'll do 12 divided by three or two, and I get six. Uh, or if I have an exception, I get zero. So now we're okay. All right, so that's successfully handled. Um, so just pay attention to, to how you're declaring your variables, how your variables are getting their values, and what exactly you're doing inside the try block, as opposed to what exactly you want them to be able to do outside of the try block. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to pay attention to there. Um, it gets easier. You basically just you use it and you get used to it. Uh, it's just all about being very careful with how you handle your data and how you flow the logic of your applications. All right, so that's going to conclude my exceptions part one video. Uh, in this video, we talked about what exceptions are. Uh, we talked about the results of not catching exceptions, i.e. the program will crash. Uh, we talked about the try catch finally block. And we talked a little bit about code interruption, uh, which is basically saying that if an exception is thrown, the rest of the code inside the try block will not execute. All right, uh, so stay tuned for the next video where we dig a little bit deeper into exceptions.